Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Today we've got an absolutely massive video for y'all with the STI Lavorg. Before we start, this here is one of my favourite Mighty Car Mods t-shirts and as such, if you grab this on the Mighty Car Mod shop and put Moog in the coupon code, you'll get a discount. And this is my favourite one, so if you put Marty in, you'll get a discount on this shirt. Show us the back of it, Martin. Oh, there you go, what a sleeve, snazzy guy. Mighty Car Mods, long sleeve, good for track days, good for not getting sunburnt. Good also, good also for working on cars to protect your arms. Anyway, today we are going to be modifying this mad STI Lavorg. You may have seen a couple of videos about swapping it. It came together really, really well. We're so happy with it and now I'm particularly excited because this platform is so popular and there are so many mods out there. There is so much. There's a pile of stuff over there that we're about so to show good. you. There is so much stuff to go on the car. But today we are going to wreck it. What is wreck it? It's the Mighty Car Mods acronym of what we like to do when we get a car. W-R-E-C-K-I-T. We got wheels, we got rubber, we got intake, we got coilovers Exhaust. or springs, some body kit stuff intake, and tune. intake and a tune, but there's Interior. more even, Martin. Heaps there's, more. There's technology. We're going to be doing some technology, some interior stuff. We're going to start on the outside, work our way in. We have no, we have no idea how long it's going to take. We have no idea what's going to happen. We're just going to start throwing parts at it. It's really fun for me to have a platform this modern that you can actually get parts for. This is not 20 or 30 years ago when there was nothing out there. You can just get stuff and it's really, really good quality. So we're going to start throwing it on. I actually had a few leftovers from the STI that I owned a few years back which will fit this car and Marty's filled in some extras with some other mods that he's keen to try out. We're looking to improve handling, cooling, induction noise and of course add some power. Although the car looks like a wagon, just about any part made for the VA STI sedan from around 2014 to 2021 should fit this thing. Under the bonnet we can put the factory intake, intercooler and most of the fuel system in the bin as it'll be replaced with some mad aftermarket goodies. So many of the jobs we're doing today would have taken less than half the time if we'd added our mods during the driveline swap, but I really wanted to experience this whole car stock for a while before we started upgrading it. I've chosen mods that will improve some aspects of the car without ruining it. Harps have been around since around 3000 BC and they've been seen in wall paintings in ancient Egypt. They're considered a symbol of hope, and I hope this one stays in the bin. The dump pipe bolts are a bit hard to remove off the back of the turbo, but with some contorting, I'll be able to get it off. The factory blow-off valve is going in the bin. I'll be upgrading that later on, but for now, I'm going to get stuck into the suspension. So I am starting on the suspension uh, and Marty's starting on the dump pipe. We weren't sure whether we we're going to do it or not, but with the intercooler off anyway, now is kind of the best time. But it is proving to be a little bit of a, putting up a bit of a fight, Martin. So we're installing a set of white line lowering springs. These ones here are designed to work with OEM shocks and we are replacing them with an OEM-like replacement with the KYBs. Uh, these actually give a really subtle drop of around 20 mil front and rear. I actually really like that amount of drop. Obviously when we're working on Volkswagen stuff, most of the springs that you can buy seem to be 25, 30, 35, 40 mil. I don't really love the look of when your kind of wheels are right up inside your arches. And also, Marty wants this car to be something that is fully functional, has utility and he can use day to day. So that there is just something that will get rid of that really big wheel arch, that gap, um, but should also still be really compliant to drive on. So I'm gonna swap these over. Meanwhile, Marty has almost finished his battle with the, uh, with the dump pipe over there. And then the wrecking will continue. Subaru suspension is pretty straightforward to upgrade, so some basic tools will get the job done. Being that the stock suspension's only a few years old, the top hat and boots are in good condition, so they can be reused. The new spring gets slotted in, and then I can put them all back together again. I'm using an NVIDIA dump pipe that will match up to the rest of the exhaust system we installed a while back. It's slightly larger than the factory dump pipe, but importantly, it still has a catalytic converter. Upgrading these things can be a little bit tricky as you have to access the bolts from above and from below. And if it's an older car, they'll likely be on there pretty tight. The front springs have very little tension on the struts, so they come apart without any fuss. The rears do require a spring compressor, so squashing them down a bit means the top hat can then easily be removed and the lowered spring dropped into place.
With the rear struts back together, I can now unbox and install our lower rear control arms. In stock form, the factory rear suspension only has toe adjustment. These aftermarket ones look just like the factory arms, but allow you to add or subtract up to two and a half degrees of camber, which is important when you're chasing extra grip, fitting bigger wheels and tyres, or in our case, both. It turns out the kit that I've got replaces the entire fuel system inside the engine bay. It requires the intake manifold to be completely removed and lifted up out of the way, which is a pretty big job. But this makes room for some clever upgrades and helps tidy up the engine bay when it's all done. The intake manifold is now off and I have a box of goodies that have arrived from Pro Speed Racing, who are a distributor in Australia that do lots of mad Subaru stuff, lots of different brands, including we have an under intake manifold intake pipe. Uh, these, the factory ones, can split under big power and after getting a lot of heat, so this is a mad upgrade. This has been a Subaru thing for a long time to upgrade this part. So I'm going to throw that on when I put the intake manifold back on. And also while I'm in there, I'm going to simplify a bunch of stuff. I'm going to be chasing more power and to do that you also need to make a few little changes. Um, little things like these that can delete TGVs and other things that do get in the way. Um, I've also got this kit as well which will delete a bunch of stuff that is no longer needed. New TGV housings, which is pretty exciting. So we're going to throw that stuff in, I'll go through and show you exactly what all these things do. TGV Delete Kits remove the tumble generator butterflies that are on the stock engine. Removing them simplifies and streamlines the intake path, and when you're chasing power with more fuel and more boost, getting rid of restrictions is a good thing. Another reason they're often deleted is it's one more moving part that can go wrong, leading to engine codes and rough running. So these are going in the bin. This is the new Roby OnePlus HP die grinder. Normally you'd use an air powered one. This uses the 18 volt battery, which is pretty cool. Four different speeds from low to very high, 22,000 RPM. Uh, you can use these Scotch-Brite pads on them, which is really handy for getting old gaskets off, which is what I've done on our car that we're working on. You can also put the die grinder bits in it too. So something that's really, really handy when you need that kind of tool. To future-proof tuning this car, I am using some big injectors, which means the car will no longer run now without a retune. These are inserted into the intake runners and then the new fuel rails are bolted down on top. I'm using about three different cob kits here and you can mix and match depending on how far you want to go with it. My theory is, is that you've taken the time to rip your intake manifold off, it's probably worth upgrading it all at once. It's a neat setup and also comes with fuel lines made from braided hose with AN fittings, which are E85 proof. Don't forget to use a bit of lubricant on the threads as these can be a little tricky compared with rubber lines but are durable and reliable once you've got them installed. I have made a heap of progress in the engine bay. Even though it doesn't look that different, I managed to delete a whole lot of stuff that I'm not going to need anymore now that we're going to be tuning the car. Speaking of tuning the car, we are also going to run ethanol in this thing or flex fuel so you can actually choose between the different fuels. You can run it on 98 or 85 or a mixture of both. Um, we're going to be reflashing this thing using some cob gear, uh, which means we're also going to be using their ethanol sensor, fuel pressure regulator, and they actually make a whole massive array of fuel system parts. This will all fit. They even come with harnesses that sort of adapt in um, to use existing wiring like the O2 sensors and the TGV controls and stuff like that to actually run the flex fuel. It's quite clever the way that works with the factory ECU. So utilizing what Subaru put there and then reflashing it. Um, if you go into town, standalone management's always my preference. Uh, but for this, just to get to the sort of next level, we're just gonna flash it and get it done. So adapters to get in and out of the fuel rails. Um, lines, hoses, it's got the quick connects from the factory, we're going to go into AN fittings as well like that. Ethanol scent, basic, I've got to work out where all this goes. A common upgrade of Subarus is parallel fuel rails. There's hours of internet forum arguments to read if you want to deep dive on the benefits and drawbacks of each, but normally the fuel is supplied sequentially. The idea is that there's a possibility of a pressure or flow drop between cylinders which can lead to inconsistent fueling and potentially a bad time with Rodney or his mate bearing if you've modified and turned up your car. By distributing the fuel more evenly you end up with consistent fueling and the only downside really is some more hoses under your intake manifold. This is the reason why some of the unnecessary parts are removed in the process just to make space. With the fuel rails and lines installed, the intake manifold can go back in over the silicon turbo intake pipe, and then I can move on to replacing the factory fuel pump. Subaru has been using this style of fuel hanger for years, and it's really common on Japanese cars in the last 15 years or so. The pump is inside an enclosure which also contains a fuel filter. This upgrade is very common and supports the use of ethanol, as well as some more consistent fuel supply to the engine bay. 
When chasing big power on a built engine, you're more likely to see a full replacement fuel hanger or external surge tanks. It's important to match your fuel pump to the power figure that you're chasing. If you go too big, you can create more problems than you solve. The fuel lines have to have enough flow to supply, use and then return the unused fuel back to the tank without any restriction. This pump will support the kind of power that the stock block will be able to put out. Our mate Aaron dropped in to have a look at the process and also untangle some of the spaghetti of wires and hoses in the engine bay. It does get pretty busy under the bonnet of a Subaru when you've got this much going on, but with it all in place it's time to install our mad big top mount intercooler. And with the cooler thoroughly tested we can install our GFB blower valve. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install a GFB blow-off valve on your Subaru turbocharged engine. This is the GFB response and this works on a GT Liberty and Legacy 03 onwards. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install a blow-off valve on your Subaru. This is a GFB response. I made this exact video exactly 10 years ago uh, on Marty's Mum's driveway. Now we're doing it again. We are installing a GFB response. Um, our mate Brett, uh, we have a whole series about him, Go Fast Brett, about how turbo stuff works. But the response is probably our favourite valve because it has a bias of how much you want to recirculate or how much you want to actually vent to the atmosphere. But for us, this control here is basically blow off valve noise or blow off valve dose. And this is going on, and then the intake's going on, and then we're going to hear all the mad turbo noises. It's very, very exciting. Your car goes boo boo ba. Your car goes. Your car goes ting 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 ping ping ping. My car goes. My car goes. My car goes. That was in so many pieces, uh, but now it's done. It looks really neat. It looks awesome. I can't actually start it yet because I've got a load of tune onto it. Once I've done that, then we can start it. So we got lucky with how straightforward the swap was, but that doesn't mean all the parts on the car are perfect. This is off the 2018 STI rec that we used. Um, it's basically just really crusty and wouldn't come off, leaking a bit of grease and whatever in there and completely worn out where the hex goes in to take this off. I am going to be upgrading them anyway to some uh, white line adjustable sway bar links. It means we can sort of fine tune the way it works. It's just a nice little upgrade and also gets rid of that chattiness. So that's a direct swap. I just make them the same length, drop it in and it's all done. To everybody else with no turbos, you know where your car belongs, in the bin. All of the suspension is done, and so now it's wheel time. I think I'm doing a not a great job of hiding what kind of wheel this is, Martin. <laughs> but oh, I'm excited. Before I show you this kind of wheel, we need to go back in time, don't we, Martin? We do. You can be Marty McFly. Yep. And I'll be Doc McStuffin. Yep, Doc is that McStuffin. His name? And we can go back about four or so years. Yep. Have a look at this. Let's do it. Oh, what is that STI? Look, look at that. Look at that thing, dude. So fat. That is fat. So good. Wood own. And now I do own. And I'd actually completely forgotten about that. It wasn't until these videos came out and someone said, remember you saw it in Turbos and Temples? I was too busy thinking about Nissan March Super Turbos to think about that, but it did look awesome. Yeah, that's right. And of course, if you haven't seen that, that is one of the feature films we've made in Japan. It's Turbos and Temples 2. It's absolutely huge. Check it out. It's a three hour it's feature film that's cut into huge. two pieces. Anyway, you can watch that for full, um, for free on the YouTubers. But Martin, anybody with a keen eyeball might have seen what kind of wheels were on that car. And as such, it's similar, are you ready, exactly Martin? the same, but very, very similar. Are you ready? Yep. Do you get? <laughs> are you excited that someone's lifting their shirt up in front of you? Yeah. Um, here it is, everybody. No, it's not. Oh, yes, don't be is. that no, guy. Come not. on. No. Okay, there it is. Oh yes. So, a couple so of volts. So cool. TU-37s, Martin. TU-37 Sagas, which is a different thing for something. I don't know, wheel nerds know the reason. All I know is it fits. It is tricky to find wheels to fit this car because of the massive six-pot brakes and also because of the way Subarus work with their guards. You can't just run massive, massive wheels and still get brake clearance and still not scrub. Uh, importantly, they're also wrapped in a set of Michelin Pilot Sport 5s, which are absolutely excellent as street tyres, and they go right on the track too. They are the successor to the Pilot Sport 4 and I believe give similar uh, kind of... Um, traction 
and performance as the 4S, in the wet, uh, I yeah, believe. Um, excellent yeah. in the wet, excellent in the dry. We run them on all of our cars now. Michelin is a sponsor of the show. Um, and then these very here, excited. Martin, came from Japan and they were very, very expensive. Uh, yeah, T37s are expensive. New. It's really hard to find wheels that will fit this exact build secondhand. I look for ages. Since we first kicked off the build and first got that STI, which was quite a while ago, I've been looking for wheels to try and make the formula work and it was uh, very tricky. I actually got these from Aaron at Import Monster and, and we spent a lot of time sort of working out exactly what would fit and because it is a car I want a daily a lot and I also want to take it to the track I want a lightweight wheel I can run a good size tire on I will probably also eventually go to a bigger tire um, because the front will swallow big wheels the back won't so I've got something a bit special coming from Japan to sort that out later but these wheels fit perfectly with the brakes and then later on I'll be able to go to perhaps a 255 or even a 265 so these are 240 240 Five forty eighteen, which is a very common size for this kind of car, and also the wheel I think is a eighteen by nine and a half plus thirty eight, which That's is a common size. That's wide as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's nine and a half. Fat. It's good for this kind of size tires. The, the, the tiniest, I mean, it's barely stretch. That's about as small as I would go on a nine and a half. Um, you can't even go smaller than that, but that's about as small as a nine and a half. A two five five or a two six five will fit really nice and, nice square, and square on there, yeah. but it will scrub on the back. So for now, I'm going two four five, running it. Then we'll come back to it later and upgrade. Also, see how I go for grip, yeah. because if the two four five has plenty of grip and works good at the track and works good on the street, it might be fine. But you do get that nice chunky look with a big tire as yeah, well. Yeah, cool. The other benefit of buying wheels or someone who kind of specialises in them is getting the correct size hub rings. So these will fit beautifully into the back of the wheel there, and then help centre the wheel onto the hub. I am just so happy with how this car is looking. The wheels are a good balance of looks, they're lightweight, and they fit the tyres really well. We have dropped from a 19 to an 18 inch wheel, which is pretty common for this particular car. Importantly also, they fit over the massive six pot brakes and look a little bit more like the JDM cousin that we spotted outside of Super Auto Backs all that time ago in Japan. Yeah dude, down she comes. Here we go Martin. <laughs> oh, oh yes. so fat. Nice. It's going to settle a little bit more, obviously, once it moves. But it look will. at that, Martin. It look, looks excellent. Look at the squareness of it. Just a little bit of toe on the back. Don't worry about that. Um, that's going to need a wheel alignment before we drive it. So you will be hearing it when we drive it also, because I'm very excited to hear how the whole package sounds now. Due to the amount of changes we've made under the bonnet, we're going to need a retune on the dyno before we can drive this thing hard. The first step is to replace the coolant we had to empty out to pull the engine apart. Then we can load in a base map to get us on the road and over to the dyno. We've been emailed a map for the Cobb access port that we can load in to get the car running and driving. It's set up for the bigger injectors and the modified fuel system, but has some safety built in with lower boost and less aggressive timing. With the files transferred to the access port, we can plug it into the factory OBD port in the car and write it into the stock computer. With it successfully flashed, we can hit the road. Oh, it's feeling good. Wheel alignment done. Drives nice. It's just got a base tune in it just to be able to drive it. Yep. Um, and you can see all the air fuel mixtures and stuff like that on the little display and they're all looking good. So I wouldn't be driving it hard. Yep. But it's perfect to go to the dyno, which is what needs to happen next. It feels great on these springs. Like it feels yeah. very compliant. There's obviously a bit more, you can feel there's a bit more confidence in the firmness, but it doesn't at all feel like yep. the ride's ruined, you know? A speed hump like that is not like jarring yes. you. It's actually, yep. I actually forgot it even had springs. Yeah, and, you know, first got it, I'm like, oh, okay, this this feels normal, and that's right, we lowered it. So yeah, no scrubbing, which is amazing as well, because yeah. the, the wheels and tyres are And that's wider. a big one, if you've got it as a daily, that's just annoying. That's right. Uh, and I would say, the only thing I would say, I know this is to do with the tune, but we freed up everything, right? Like dump pipe, intake, um, TGVs out of the way, bigger injectors, all this other stuff done. It just feels a bit freer. Yes. Like when you, when you throttle on, it just feels like a little bit more alive, a little bit more awake. And I mean, that's a breathe. That's what breathing mods are supposed to do. Can you see what car's in front of us, Martin? I saw a car. And a Golf R wagon Wolfsburg. I saw straight away. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, is it, a Golf it's serendipitous, isn't it? <laughs> somewhere behind us, <laughs> literally surrounded by Golfs and Audis. Yeah, but that's good. You got something different. You've got the the black pigeon amongst all the white pigeons. <laughs> Or something. Really happy with it. So yeah, so I think um, next episode we might go and hit the dyno. Yep, awesome. And um, so thanks for watching everyone. Hope you've enjoyed this very dense Wreck-It-to-Fi. It has been dense, Martin, and a little dense. bit more than just Wreck-It in the end, actually. Yeah, it was bit. like Wreck-It squared. So 
you might have noticed there's no back seat um, because we're going to change that. We're going to do a bunch of interior mods. We're going to fix a whole bunch of stuff. A lip kit to go on as well. Yep, we're going to yep. make the outside, fi literally finish the outside. The car play. Finish the inside. We're going to yank the roof box off because there's no more snow trips. The season's over. Yep. And um, and yeah, but next we're going to get it on the dyno. So next time you see this car, it's going to be whizzing up, hopefully, some good numbers. And so next episode will be the last episode for now yeah, of we'll this thing before we jump to onto um, Gold Fire Wagons exactly. <laughs> or, or other things. Hoping to get the car finished, yes. Uh, everybody, thank you very much for watching, of course. Uh, we love having you guys join us for all of these fun adventures. If you do want to support the show, we really appreciate it. MightyCarMods.com. We ship all over the world, so grab something from there. We are off to get some Thai chicken rice. Almost got it's going to be delicious. By, a, uh, by another, is that a Lavorg? Oh, no, it's an Impreza. Oh, no, it uh, see you next time, everybody. Bye.